Okay, so for the section C, looking at doing some estimation, uh, we want to estimate the energy dissipated to stop a bicycle using the brakes and estimate the braking force that must be applied. So I reckon the speed a bike travels is probably somewhere about three, four, five meters per second. So for simplicity in my calculation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it root 10, which is just over three, uh, because that means I don't even need my calculator. I can do this very easily. I reckon a bike can probably stop in about 10 meters. Maybe that's a bit of an overestimate, but I reckon that's a good one. And a person and a bike together, I reckon, is about 100 kilograms. So in terms of the kinetic energy that it has, doing half mv squared, this is why I pick root 10. So when we square it, we just get 10. So you, it starts with 500 joules, joules of kinetic energy. So we must uh, dissipate 500 joules of energy. And if we um, take that energy and divide it by the braking distance, that will give us the average braking force required. OK. So assuming the same braking force, calculate how the stopping distance changed on an uphill or downhill slope. So first thinking uphill. So if we're traveling uphill, I reckon the initial speed would be smaller. And the force braking the bike is going to be bigger because you've got the weight force plus the braking force now. And both of those together would give you a shorter stopping distance. Downhill would be completely the opposite. You'd have a lot higher initial speed, a smaller braking force, because remember the weight force is acting to accelerate the bike. The friction is against it. So we've got an overall smaller braking force, giving you a longer stopping distance. Okay, so a man jumps from a first floor window and lands on, on his feet upon, upon soft earth, and he bends his knees as he lands it's approximate landing speed. So uh, I've just estimated that the distance from the first force to ground was about five meters. So we're gonna, I'm gonna equate initial GP to final kinetic energy, essentially. So the mass actually doesn't matter, which is why I didn't estimate it. So G is around 10, the height change is about five, plug those numbers in, and we get square root of 100, which is 10, which is why I picked the distance as five to make that as easy as possible. The average force exerted by the ground on the man as he's brought to rest. So I reckon the stopping distance as you bend your knees is about half a meter between being upright and your knees bent. Uh, we had our speed is 10, and I reckon the mass, let's go roughly 100. Maybe that's a bit of an overestimate, but why not? Makes it easy. And so if we do kinetic energy is equal to work done, plug those numbers in, we get about 10,000 newtons as the force. OK, so is this value realistic? Um, no, that seems like a very big force to me. Um, so I reckon the final speed is going to be lower than 10 because uh, we're going to we added not factor in work done against air resistance. It's probably not quite as high as five meters either. And again, 10,000 newtons means that a person could weigh about 100 kilograms and still be able to support that, which seems quite large. Given that I've looked up the fattest people on Earth, which were about 500 kilograms, and they can't stand up, so that it seems like an overestimate. So, if you landed on concrete, how would that change your answer? So, I reckon the landing speed would be exactly the same because the surface you hit doesn't affect uh, the speed, but I reckon it would make the stopping distance shorter, so you're not able to sink into the ground, which you were in the previous one. So, it's going to make you stopping this shorter so the force is going to be higher to do the same amount of work. Estimate a realistic maximum force your leg by force for your legs when considering what mass you could carry, including your own mass, and working backwards to calculate maximum height. So I looked up the uh, fattest people on Earth and they were about 600 kilograms and they can't walk. So I reckon the largest mass that can walk is probably about 500 which means you're supporting a weight force of 5,000 newtons. Uh, so working backwards, if we say our stopping distance is 0.4, so I said it was 0.5 with a soft surface, so let's make it 0.4 with concrete, uh, gives us the work we have to do. And that gives, and remember before we had the work done is equal to the final kinetic energy, but final kinetic energy is equal to the change in GP anyway. So working backwards gives us a maximum height that we can jump from onto a concrete surface about 0.4 meters 
which sounds a little bit small, but remember we're jumping onto a concrete surface, so may maybe that's not unrealistic. Okay, so that finishes the section looking at uh, doing estimations.